Alcohol very easily finds its way into the brain, and when there, has a profound effect on many of the brain's structures and functions. Alcohol is a neurotoxin, meaning it is poisonous to neurons, the main type of brain cell. It causes both short-term and long-term effects and harm to the brain, although the risks and harms change throughout our life course. How does alcohol find its way into the brain? So when you take a drink of alcohol, um, you swallow it, it goes down your gullet and into your stomach, and about 20% of the alcohol gets absorbed through the stomach lining, and the remainder in your small intestine. And when it's absorbed, it goes into your bloodstream and freely travels around your body. Now, normally there's a kind of protective barrier between the blood and the brain, but because alcohol is such a small molecule, it can get across that barrier quite easily and enter the brain. The blood-brain barrier normally protects the brain from harmful substances. The reason alcohol makes people feel intoxicated is because of this ability to enter the brain. It can also affect the peripheral nervous system, including our nerves. This can cause numbness in the hands and feet and erectile dysfunction. Once in the brain, alcohol affects a chemical messenger called GABA, or gamma-aminobutyric acid, which works to slow down brain activity. Alcohol enhances GABA's effects, which leads to relaxation, sedation, and impaired cognitive function. At the same time, alcohol slows the activity of glutamate, a chemical messenger responsible for increasing brain activity and energy levels. This imbalance between GABA and glutamate explains alcohol's immediate effects on the brain, such as slurred speech, poor coordination, and slower reaction times. So alcohol can travel freely across the brain and affect really most areas of it, but there are a few parts that I might mention specifically. So the front part of the brain uh, is particularly affected by alcohol. That's important for problem solving, decision making, and judgment. There's a a smaller part within the brain called the hippocampus which is important for memory function and affected early in Alzheimer's disease that we found links with alcohol. And then finally the cerebellum at the bottom and back of the brain which is important for movement and coordination. There are two ways of understanding alcohol's effect on the brain, the acute effects and harms caused and the chronic effects and harms as well as how these interact. The acute or short-term effects include slower reaction time, poorer concentration, poorer fine motor skills, and slurred speech. There is a clear dose-response relationship, so the higher the blood alcohol concentration, the more heightened these effects and the higher risk of injury. The executive function of the brain is also affected, meaning decision-making and assessment of risk is worse. For instance, someone who has been drinking may decide to swim in the sea when they otherwise wouldn't, and coupled with poorer physical ability, the risk of drowning is higher. The risk of engaging in violence also increases, as alcohol makes it more difficult to interpret facial or vocal expressions, reduces empathy, and makes people easier to provoke. Acute harm can also lead to chronic harms, for instance, traumatic brain injury from being intoxicated and experiencing trauma to the head can then lead to neurological disability. The chronic or long-term harms from alcohol are mostly due to heavy drinking over a long period of time, usually years or decades. Again, a clear dose-response relationship exists, so the more alcohol people consume, the higher the risk of chronic harm. Many of these harms are caused by structural changes to the brain, reducing the volume of brain matter. However, brain shrinkage, the gradual loss of brain cells and connections between them, happens at lower levels of drinking too. So alcohol is actually a toxin for brain cells, it kills them, and over time that uh, leads to shrinkage of the brain. And the amount of harm is directly proportional to the amount of alcohol consumed, so the more you drink, the worse it is for your brain. Um, we've actually found uh, evidence that this shrinkage occurs at quite low levels of drinking, so anything from 7 to 14 units of alcohol a week. And over time, uh, this manifests in terms of um, memory decline in, in older age and higher risk of dementia. Long-term heavy alcohol use can also lead to a deficiency in one of the B vitamins called thiamine, which can lead to the life-threatening illness wernicke korsakoff syndrome, which has profound effects on learning and memory abilities. Sleep patterns, particularly REM sleep, are also disrupted by drinking, leading to poorer cognitive functioning and mood regulation over time. Chronic sleep disturbances due to alcohol also contribute to longer-term brain damage. In understanding alcohol's effect on the brain, it's useful to consider how it affects people at different ages, looking at its effect on a fetus, adolescents, and adults and older people. 
Drinking alcohol during pregnancy is the most common cause of preventable intellectual disability across the world. In the UK, an estimated 41% of women drank while pregnant, the fourth highest rate in the world. This can cause fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, which is linked to conditions such as learning disabilities and ADHD. The most severe form of FASD is fetal alcohol syndrome, which causes developmental delays and intellectual disability due to the child's brain not developing crucial brain structures and having smaller brain volume. The temporal lobe is particularly affected, which controls the formation of memories, understanding language and hearing. Drinking alcohol in adolescence has particular risks attached to it. The brain is only fully developed in a person's mid to late 20s. The prefrontal cortex fully develops last, and this part is responsible for decision making, assessing risk and prioritisation. This helps explain why the most common cause of harm in this age group are traffic crashes, accidents like drowning or falls, self-harm and violence. Adding alcohol into this reduces risk assessment further, increasing high risk behaviour and the risk of harm. And adolescents are more likely to engage in heavy episodic drinking than other age groups, compounding this risk. However, there are also chronic harms associated with adolescent drinking, with alcohol being a major risk factor for dementia in later life. A study of Swedish men found that heavy drinking as a teenager was the biggest risk factor for developing early onset dementia. The risk of becoming alcohol dependent is also higher in adolescents, with research suggesting this could be linked to the developing brain. In a US study of 43,000 people, 15% of those with alcohol dependence had developed it before the age of 18. 47% had before age 21, and over 60% before age 25. This is why it is so important to delay the initiation of drinking for as long as possible. Many of the harms associated with drinking in adulthood may well have developed during adolescence. Alcohol dependency is characterised by difficulty controlling drinking and having overwhelming cravings for alcohol. A 2024 study found that people with alcohol use disorder could be identified with brain imaging as they had weaker connections between certain brain areas linked to self-control, decision-making and impulsive behaviour. However, research generally finds that most people who develop alcohol dependency stop being dependent after a number of years not drinking. This wouldn't be possible if there were permanent changes to the brain, although for a minority of people, dependence does continue. Heavy alcohol use can also cause mental health problems such as depression, which in itself is a major cause of disability, social problems and suicide. In fact, alcohol is the leading cause of mental disability across the world. A 2021 study found that as drinking increases, so too does the risk of depression. Those with common mental disorders were twice as likely to report an alcohol use disorder. And the reverse of that is true too. Mental health problems can also cause increased alcohol use, with alcohol being used as self-medication or as a coping mechanism, a potential problem in itself due to the many harmful effects of alcohol use. Alcohol is strongly linked to suicide too, with around 15% of suicides attributed to alcohol. Heavy drinking raises the immediate risk, while long-term drinking heightens it by worsening depression. A 2022 study found a 94% higher risk of suicide among drinkers compared to non-drinkers. Regarding older people, alcohol is a key risk factor for dementia, stroke and falls. There are a few key reasons for this. So older people are at higher risk of alcohol-related brain harm for several reasons. Firstly, your body's ability to break down alcohol gets less efficient with age. Uh, secondly, you may develop other medical problems or be on medications that could interact with alcohol. And thirdly, you, you may become more frail and at higher risk of things like falls. We've studied the uh, effects of alcohol on the brain using brain imaging, and we can examine the two different types of, of brain tissue, grey and white matter. And we can see harmful associations at pe in people who are drinking just 14 units a week and greater. And this has knock-on effects in terms of faster memory decline over time and increased risk of dementia. Dementia cases are expected to triple in the next 30 years due to better diagnoses and an ageing population. Types of dementia include alcoholic dementia, Alzheimer's and vascular dementia. Alcohol may cause dementia by killing brain cells, inflaming the brain or raising blood pressure, which increases the risk of vascular dementia and strokes. Strokes are a major burden, being the leading neurological cause of disability in Europe. 
Falls are a leading cause of injury-related death among older people, with frequent and heavy drinking being major risk factors. Each 10 grams of alcohol, around one unit, increases fall risk by 15%, as even low levels of alcohol impairs balance, visual focus and reaction time. As alcohol has such a profound effect on neurological harm, what can be done to reduce this? So this is really an active research area for us because it's so important. At the moment, there's only really one intervention that I can suggest, and that is to make sure you're not deficient in vitamin B1 or thiamine. And if you are, then you can have a, a tablet to replace that because we know that the thiamine deficiency is a pathway by which alcohol can cause permanent damage to the brain. But in, in more general advice, uh, it's reducing your alcohol intake. So we know that the amount of brain harm is directly proportional to the amount you drink. So even reducing your intake a little bit will lessen the harm to your brain. Many of these harms can be improved by reducing or stopping drinking, although there are some that are irreversible, such as FASD and traumatic brain injuries. In a comprehensive 2024 literature review, the authors state that although individual level awareness is important and may lead to change in some people, significant change can only be achieved by alcohol consumption falling nationally, particularly to reduce heavy drinking. Therefore, policies to reduce the affordability, availability and acceptability of alcohol are crucial.